In this video, I am going to show you how I made this animation which was entirely done in Blender. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, it is just a breakdown video. The animation contains 7 scenes, which are represented by various Blender files. Before we dive into the actual scenes, I would like to first share with you the preparation process. The main idea was to showcase a mechanical keyboard. After a quick search on the internet, I found out that Keychron has nice mechanical keyboards. Therefore, I chose the Keychron V3. The main purpose of the animation was to show that the keyboard was indeed mechanical, to show the color variations available, and to also show that the keyboard is compatible with a variety of gadgets. The next step was to make some sketches, this was just to provide me with a rough idea of how the animation was going to look like. You can see I even wrote some description texts below each sketch, to give more information to be used in the animation process later. The sketches are the ones which guided me in identifying what I needed to model. I gathered all the reference images and blueprints required in order to create all the 3D objects I was going to need. You can see that all the 3D objects are in one Blender file, they also have real-world measurements in relation to each other. After modeling them, I also made sure that they are textured. I put them in respective different collections as you can see here on the outliner. The whole animation contains seven scenes. When creating each scene, the first thing I did was going to scene properties to set the units right. I then deleted everything in the scene for a fresh start. Next step was going to file, then append. I opened the file with all the 3D objects, then select the collections or objects I needed. Let's start with the first scene. This is just a plane that has a subdivision surface, wave modifier, and geometry nodes. If I disable these two modifiers in viewport, you can see that the plane is just a single face. On the subdivision surface, I made levels of subdivisions to be 5, in viewport and render. Then I made it to be simple, to keep the corners of the plane. If I expand the wave modifier, you can see the adjustments I did here. I also set the speed to be at 0.2. I use geometry nodes to attach these keycaps to this plane. The keycaps are here, and I also put them in their own collection. Here in geometry nodes workspace, you can see the node tree I used. The keycaps are in this collection info node, connected to instance. The scale of all the keycaps is controlled by this value node. In the animation, you can see the camera has some movement. The camera is a child of this empty sphere. The empty sphere has keyframes on rotation. As the empty sphere rotates, it moves the camera as well. Here you can see these switches making a popping effect. Each one of them has keyframes on location, rotation, and scale. You can also see that they are not animating at the same time. That is because I offset their keyframes by 5 frames subsequently. This empty sphere is the one controlling the camera. I set keyframes on its rotation. In this scene, these objects are animating along the z-axis. To add on that, the keycaps have a twist modifier in which I animated the twist angle. This empty sphere is the one controlling the camera. I set keyframes on its x location. In this fourth scene, this empty cube is the one controlling the rotation of the keyboard. I set keyframes on its Y rotation. The camera is also moving, I set keyframes on its Y location. When the camera reaches the second keyboard, some keycaps are seen making random movements. Each keycap has location keyframes that are spread across the timeline for randomness. In this fifth scene, you can see that the keyboards are rotating around. Each keyboard components are children of their respective empty objects. All the empty objects have keyframes on their Z rotation. In this animation you will notice that the keyboards below only appear just before they rotate. 
That is because I set keyframes on their render visibility. At frame 29, I disabled them from being visible in renders, then set keyframes. At frame 30, I enabled them in renders, and set keyframes as well. On the camera, I set keyframes on its Y location. This empty sphere is controlling the camera. I set keyframes on its X rotation, and Y location. In the sixth scene, the camera is the one moving away from the objects. I put keyframes on the Y location of the camera. This empty sphere controls the camera. I animated its Z location and X rotation. The display of the iMac has a video texture and you can see it plays. The video texture is connected to the base color and emission of principal BSDF. On the video texture, I enabled auto refresh so that the video plays if you press the space key. This is the last scene. On this camera, I set keyframes on its Y location. This empty sphere controls the camera, and I animated it on X and Z rotation. You can see that the coffee cup is also moving. I animated its location. In this scene, the iPad disappears then the iPhone comes in immediately. I set keyframes on their render visibility. At frame 45, the iPhone is the one visible in renders. At frame 44, the iPad is the one visible. The displays of the iPad and the iPhone have the video texture. I used Eevee to render all the scenes. The file format was PNG, and I chose RGB with Alpha. I created another Blender file, specifically for video editing and color grading. I added in all the PNG image sequences and arranged them along the timeline, in Blender they are called strips. I also gave each strip a specific color tag, to keep me away from visual confusion. I added an adjustment layer on top of all the strips. Whatever modifiers you add to the adjustment layer, affects everything that is below it. I added to it color balance modifier and brightness contrast. Since all the strips have alpha, I put a light gray color strip below them. I also added an audio track to the animation. At the start of the animation, I put this image that I downloaded from the Keychron official site. At the end of the animation, I put this text. I set keyframes on its scale. The text scales from 1 to 1.3. All the Blender files used to create this animation project are available on my Gumroad page. All the images used in this project are packed inside the Blender files. You will not get any errors with missing image textures. Let me know if you like this breakdown video, because I can create this type of videos once in two weeks.